I'm Ruth Matthews and I'm the Executive Director of the Water Footprint Network. And as I travel around the world talking to people about the water footprint, I often refer to my clothing to give an example of how the water footprint interacts with us as individuals. So one of the concepts of the water footprint is that we all have a direct water footprint, whether we're an individual or a company or a nation. And we have an indirect water footprint, and that indirect water footprint is that water that's used uh, to produce the goods that we consume. Uh, and that, that water use may happen in the location where we live, uh, or our business is, or within our nation, or else it might be somewhere else in the world. And so if I'm thinking about myself uh, and my own direct water footprint, uh, that's the water I use at home uh, for cooking, cleaning, uh, my garden. Uh, but when I go to my indirect water footprint, it's for example the, the water that was used to produce the clothes I'm wearing right now. And obviously when we look at clothing, we don't see water. I'm not standing in dripping wet clothes. And so what is that water and where does it come from? Well, it comes, for instance, in the production of cotton in the washing, dyeing, finishing of that cotton to be able to produce the colors and the, and the characteristics of the, of, the, uh, of the fabric. Where does that water come from? Uh, it comes in the agriculture for the growing of the cotton. It comes in the washing, dyeing, finishing phase for turning the fabric from fiber to uh, something beautiful and colorful. Uh, and so that's the indirect water footprint. And of course what that does is it links me to that water footprint, uh, for instance, where the cotton is grown, maybe in India, or the, the washing, dyeing, finishing do is done, maybe in Bangladesh or in China. And so we need to start thinking about how we are related to water resources around the world. And one of the projects that the Water Footprint Network has been working on is with the clothing retailer CNA. And of course, if they're selling clothing, their direct water footprint is the water footprint at their stores. It's not very much. Uh, but their indirect water footprint is all that water that's being used in the agriculture, in the in the making of the raw materials, in processing those raw materials. And so, as they became interested in sustainability, uh, thinking about their supply chain, they realized that water was a really critical issue for them. And so they came to the Water Footprint Network and we developed a global partnership with them. Uh, and we've been working with them over the years to help them understand the water footprint in their supply chain, uh, focusing first on cotton, and in that process, initially we used globally available data to give them some idea of what their water footprint is. Uh, once we did that, we saw where their, where their hot spots are in terms of where's their water footprint the largest. And I'm talking both in terms of water quantity and water quality, so the blue water footprint, green and blue water footprint, and the gray water footprint. Uh, and where it is the least sustainable. And when we did that, we saw that they have a hot spot in India for the cotton agriculture, and the hot spots in Bangladesh and China for the washing, dyeing, finishing. And following from that, we said, okay, well, this gives us a picture, but to really know what they need to do with their suppliers to improve that supply chain, to make it more sustainable, uh, we need to dig into those areas. And so this last year, we've been collecting data from farmers, cotton farmers in three states in India, and we've been collecting data from washing, dyeing, finishing mills in Bangladesh and China. And using that data, we've been getting much more information about the specific aspects of the water footprint and the practices that are related to, the, to those aspects of the water footprint. 
And what's been really interesting in that process is if we look at the cotton farming, for instance, we looked at three different practices. Uh, one of them conventional farming, another real farming, which is a practice that has been developed by Cotton Connect, another partner in the project, which reduces the amount of chemical and synthetic uh, pesticides and, and fertilizers that are used, uh, but is aimed at making sure that yields are high so that there's a good income to the farmers. And then we've looked at organic. And what's very interesting is to see that, in fact, there's quite a range in terms of the, the amount of water that's being consumed and the amount of water that's being polluted, how water is being polluted, and a range across these different practices. And so as we work with the farmers, and their data, what we're seeing is that there's a tremendous opportunity to match a combination of improvements in sustainability in terms of the environmental aspects and improvements of sustainability in terms of the economic aspects by building their uh, yield coming from their fields. And so this is an example of how a company working with the Water Footprint Network is working through its supply chain to actually make changes in, on the ground at the farm level that are going to improve people's livelihoods as well as improve the environment. And I think this is an example of how we need to be working as we go forward in implementing sustainable development goals in the post-2015 agenda so that we really use all of the different parties and the strengths that they have uh, to reach that, that goal of finding the balance between environmental sustainability, economic sustainability, and an equitable sharing of the, the impacts and the benefits of water use.